probably one of our, most people's favorite times of the year. I know it's a difficult time of the year for some people um, because they'll face it alone or they'll face it for the first time alone. Um, but I love this time of year. Um, we woke up this morning, walked outside. It was a little warmer this morning than it has been, and it felt a little weird, and I kind of missed the cold already, and it's only been gone for a day, but hopefully it'll come back and uh, refresh us again. Uh, there's something about the holiday season. Once you've lived up north, you want it to be kind of cold for the holidays. It's just, nope. <laughs> I guess it just depends on who you are. But uh, I look forward to the cold, but uh, I enjoy living in Florida as well. Um, yesterday, my in-laws FaceTimed us, and that's kind of like Skype. It's where you can see them, and uh, they can see you. And uh, so they FaceTimed us, and uh, they, were, they, had, they had a sheet of ice. They couldn't leave their house. And so I walked outside, and I was showing them the green grass and the palm trees and the sun, and they're just getting angrier and angrier, you know. So anytime you can get the in-laws, that's a good day. Well, we are glad that you're here today, and I look forward to what God's going to do. Uh, how many of you are traveling for Thanksgiving? Anybody traveling? Got a couple. I know that uh, Wally and Pat are traveling even now, and I'm sure many others but uh, we're glad that you're here and you're faithful. I was excited last week. We had 50 people even in our class last week. And just uh, thankful for that. Enjoyed having the uh, Hansons here. Always like to hear them sing and preach. And uh, just looking forward to a great day today. Let's do this this morning. Um, let's have our ushers come. And uh, they'll take an offering. Anything that's put in the offering today will go toward our, our building maintenance. Um, there's a lot of things that just always need touch up and always need to repair. If you think about your house and you think about the size of your house and that there's always something going wrong, now multiply that by 25 or 30, and that's uh, the type of things that uh, we have experienced here at the church. Uh, there's always a wall that needs to be repainted, always carpets that need cleaned. Um, imagine 400 people going through your house every week of the world, and then 250 bus kids running through your house on, uh, on Wednesday night. You know, it, it's just constant repair and constant upkeep, so anything that's given in the offering will put toward building maintenance and uh, try to keep things neat, try to keep them clean. Remember, this is the house of the Lord. We want it to be uh, a good representation of how we feel about the Lord. We love Him. We want His house to be right. Anybody this morning have a prayer request, a prayer request or a praise, something that you'd like to share? And then we'll also do, yes, Miss Beverly. Pray for Brandon, just went into the Air Force. Uh, I'll definitely be praying for him. Anybody else? Prayer request, praise, something you'd like to share this morning? Yes, Miss Leslie. An unspoken. How many of you would say you have an unspoken this morning? Just wow, every hand almost. Uh, different burdens, different concerns. If you could just give that to Brother Steve Hawthorne. That would be great. Thank you. Any other prayer requests, praises, anything you'd like to share this morning? Anything at all? All right, we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're just going to go around the room. I want you to think of something that you're thankful for this morning, something you're thankful for. Uh, maybe something that people don't normally think of, but something that you'd like to share this morning. But let's pray, ask the Lord to bless today. And uh, Lord, we do thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you that you love us, you care about us. Lord, we thank you for your word and the encouragement that we can get through it. Lord, as we look at Bible characters, as we look at the verses that you have specific for us, Lord, I pray that you would be with uh, uh, Miss Beverly and um, Brandon, Lord. I pray that you would just be with him as he starts a new phase of life, Lord. I pray that you would protect him, Father, that you would uh, put a hedge of protection around him. And, Lord, just uh, continue to strengthen him in his Christian walk. Lord, I pray for those who are traveling today. Lord, I think of all the unspoken, just uh, so many things, Lord, that weigh on our hearts. Father, I pray that each one would just uh, turn that over to you and trust you. And we'll praise you for it. Be a preacher as he preaches today. I, th I think a very important message, Lord, a powerful message. Just the title of the message is a sobering thought. And, Lord, I pray that you would help us today uh, draw closer to you. And we'll thank you for it and give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, something you're thankful for. Something you're thankful for. Yes. Able to come back. She's been gone for how many weeks? A long while. It's good to have Miss Melba back. Yes, brother.
God's providence. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. Anybody else? Yes. Salvation for himself and his family, and his needs are met. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I'm thankful for Miss Debbie. She helped us find our new house. I don't know if you know about that. But she called us up one day and said, were you looking for a toddler bed? And we're like, yeah, we are. And she said, my neighbor has one for sale. So we went to see it. And on our way to her house, we got a little lost. And we happened to see uh, the house for sale. And that's how it all happened. Yes, ma'am. Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I'm born in the United States of America. The older I get, the more I think about that one. You know, um, there's a lot of other places you could have been born, a lot of other families you could have been born into, a lot of other uh, cultures you could have been born into. Thankful for the United States of America. Thankful for family. Yes. Salvation. Absolutely. Yes. Salvation. No, no, I'm ready. I know your name. There was an invitation given before noon? Yeah. Wow, wow, that's a miracle, a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Each day you've been given. I helped out with a funeral this past week, and at the gravesite, that's what I talked about. Each day is a gift, and it's given to us by God, and what we do with it, we'll give an account for someday, and we need to take every, get, every day, treat it as a gift, be thankful for it, and uh, return service to the Lord for the day that he's given us. Anybody else? Very good. Yes, ma'am. Holy Spirit conviction stays with us, stays after us, keeps us on track. I saw another hand. I saw one. I saw. Yes, daily guidance thankful for sight being able to see you know anybody ever heard of George Yance he was a bass singer for uh, the cathedrals way back when they were probably the when they were the best and uh, he he does uh, he talks about the fact that um, when I get up I've got legs that I can use and I got arms and I've got eyes and you know just our health you know sometimes we don't feel the best and sometimes we're in pain but nobody had to carry us in here, um, we were able to get up and get ready, and so thankful for our health, thankful for mobility, things like that. Anybody else don't want to leave you out? All right, let's talk about what Gary said, the providence of God, the providence of God. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to Genesis chapter number 12, Genesis chapter number 37, excuse me, Genesis chapter number 37, we're going to look at verses 12 through 14. In 18 through 28. Genesis chapter number 37. I want to mention just a couple of things. This coming uh, Tuesday, if you don't have anything going on, uh, we're going to take a senior trip. And uh, it's really open to anybody. We're going to go down to Fort Myers. We're going to tour Edison and Ford home. And then we're going to go to a Culver's. Uh, they just built a Culver's. If you've never been to Culver's, they have them up north. It's just a great restaurant. And uh, so we're going to be going there. And that's Tuesday. We're going to leave here at 8.30 in the morning. Also want to let you know that uh, Brother Warren has uh, calendars for sale. If you've not seen these calendars, these are King James verses, but then also with the beautiful scenery. And uh, they're made with really, really heavy cardstock. You can frame these afterward. Um, but a lot of good things going on. We've got a Christmas banquet coming up. 
Um, lots of stuff coming up, so uh, looking forward to what God's going to do in the coming days. Genesis chapter number 37, where we left Joseph off, we've already talked about the fact that his family was not one that he would have picked. His family um, was pretty messed up. There's favoritism in the home. Um, his uncle, uh, Laban, uh, we talked about his dad. His dad's name means tricker, one to trip up. Um, we talked about the fact that Joseph, if he could have, would not have chosen where he was in life, the family that he was put in. Uh, he, w he probably wished some days that his family wasn't the way it was. And uh, last week we talked about the fact um, that uh, Joseph is uh, in a position and he's in, he's in this home that's uh, dysfunctional. And um, today we look at verses number 12, or 12, 13, and 14, and then we'll jump down and read a few more verses. And his brethren went to feed their father's flocks in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem. Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said, Here am I. And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, and see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And when they saw him afar off, if you'll look down at verse 18, the brothers now see Joseph is coming, and when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said to one another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into a pit in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands, to deliver him again to his father. Reuben there in verse number 22 had plans of saving uh, Joseph's life and returning him to the father. Verse number 23, And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is, if, is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. And let, not, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Israel, Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. As we find Joseph here, Joseph's just going on an errand for his dad, and he comes down, and um, his brothers see him afar off, and they just say, this is our chance, this is our time, we're away from dad, um, he's on this long journey, and he's coming here, we can tell him that he was devoured by an animal, this is our chance to kill him, and Reuben hears that, and Reuben just says, let's not kill him, let's just put him in a pit, and leave him there. And uh, he had the goal of releasing him back to his father. I think it's interesting that when they throw him in this pit, they, they all sit down to eat. They all sit down to eat, you know, and they're just sitting there eating. And uh, Joseph's in this pit, and I'm thinking, uh, as this is all happening, that Joseph at some point saying, this can't be good. Boy, the hatred that my brothers have toward me. Man, all of this anger, all of this bitterness, all of this fuel has come to this moment, and Joseph's got this thought in his mind, this can't be good. I think all of us at some point in our life have uh, come to the point where we are in a situation where we say, this can't be good. Um, one of those situations happened to me when I was young. Um, I went to Memorial Baptist Church in Rockford, Illinois, and uh, last night I looked it up and found a picture of the church so you could see it, and I wanted to remind myself a little bit um, this is the place where I went to church. This is the place where I went to school. Josh, if you could put that picture up. 
And uh, this is a place that I'm very thankful of. We talked just a few minutes ago about um, what are you thankful for. This is a place that I'm thankful for. Uh, this is where my family went to church. This is where my family was saved. And uh, so when I think about Thanksgiving time, I think about the fact that uh, Ron Comfort came to preach right here at Memorial Baptist Church, and uh, my parents were saved there. And I went to school there. It was a Christian school. And uh, our principal's son, his name was Andrew, he loved to uh, play hockey. Now, I was more basketball and soccer, but um, about the time that uh, uh, he was into hockey, that movie came out, uh, The Mighty Ducks. Has anybody ever seen The Mighty Ducks? Okay. Um, there's, a, there's something that happens, and I don't even think I've ever seen the whole movie, but there's something that happens in that movie. It's called Knuckle Puck Time. And what they do is they set that hockey puck on its edge, and they hit that thing as hard as they can, and the hockey puck takes off in the air and goes into the net. Well, one day before school, Andrew was outside, and he was just uh, practicing. And he was just, there, there was a brick wall, and uh, he was just hitting that, uh, that puck up against that building. And um, I had a little extra time, so I went over there and said, uh, let me see that. I want to try it. I was much older than Andrew. He was very young, uh, probably like seven or eight. I was 13 or 14. And um, he, was, he was just hitting that hockey puck. And I took it from him. I said, I'm going to do something. And I put that hockey puck on its edge, and I was going to do knuckle puck time. And I reared back, and I hit that puck as hard as I could. And I was looking at the brick wall, and the hockey puck didn't hit the brick wall. And it was at this time where I was thinking, this can't be good. <laughs> I, these are the back windows, but these very windows were by the parking lot as well. Um, these are massive windows. Um, I wish I could give you an estimate of how big they are, but they are massive windows. And right above where I did that, where I hit that hockey puck, was our English classroom. And that hockey puck flew up and went through that uh, English classroom window. Now, if I could have chose a window to do it, it would have been English class. <laughs> but uh, at that moment, I was thinking to myself, this can't be good. And truthfully, we have all types of days, we have all types of circumstances where uh, things aren't going quite the way that we were hoping that they would go. Boy, when his brothers were talking about killing him, they were talking about killing him in front of him. They were, say, they were saying, well, let's just, let's just slay him. And Joseph's there in this pit, and you have to wonder if he starts to think about, well, maybe those dreams really didn't mean anything. Maybe those dreams that I had weren't from God. Maybe those dreams that I had had no meaning whatsoever because I'm about to have my life taken by my brothers who absolutely hate me. I want to remind you of a verse this morning. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. All things are for your sake. Um, I think about the things that have happened in my life and the difficult times that I've gone through, the places where I'm saying, man, is there really a plan? Is there really a plan? Is there really a goal? Does God really have something for me? Because this just doesn't seem... The, like the way I would do it. That's exactly where Joseph is right here. But Joseph, at some point in his life, had somebody who loved him, had somebody who trained him, had somebody who taught him the Bible. And uh, Joseph uh, is sitting in a pit. He's worried about the fact that they're going to take his life. And at this point, as a human, you have to think that Joseph's thinking, maybe those dreams didn't mean anything at all. I want to give you a couple of things. Number one, he came unto his own. He came unto his own. His father asked him to go down and check on his brothers. Um, I believe there's a couple of reasons he did this. Number one, I think that he cared for his, uh, Joseph's brothers. I think that they were family. I also think that the value of the animals that were with him. Um, he knew that his sons were probably up to no good. He knew that his sons were probably not where they were supposed to be. And that was true. They weren't where they, were, they said they were going to be. They were in another spot. But uh, he asked Joseph, please go and check on your brothers. And Joseph's response is, here am I. Here am I. Uh, this was a big deal. This was, uh, he was the youngest, and he was going to leave the safety 
of where he was with the Father, and he was going to make a journey. And anytime you make a journey on your own, even today, uh, there's safety issues. And Joseph left the safety of his father, and he had no reserve. He said, here am I. Can I ask you this question this morning? What is it in your life? Is there something that God's asked you to do, and your response has some reservation? May God's asked you to do something, or God lays it on your heart to do something, but you get reserves. Boy, I can't do that because you think about Moses, you think about the fact that God asked Moses specifically to go and talk to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh just said, wait, 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 wait. or Moses said, I can't do that because I, I, I can't speak, I can't do the things that you're asking me to do because uh, I get tongue-tied and I get nervous and um, it's just not part of my personality. He starts to give all these different excuses, and truthfully, we can give those same excuses. When God the Father asks us to do something, our response needs to be much like Joseph's, here am I. I know that you're going to enable me. I know that you're going to give me the strength. I know that if uh, you ask me to do something, you're not going to ask me to do something that some, I cannot do. So Joseph here has the right response, and he has no reserve. And then uh, we know through the rest of the story is no return. No return. You think about this, uh, Joseph, as he gets ready to go, he's going on a much longer journey than he ever anticipated. Boy, he, he thought in his mind, yeah, I'll, take, I'll go down there, I'll check on him, I'll come back and I'll report to Dad, and I'll go back to doing the things that I do here. But Joseph, if he would have known, would have had to pack everything that he had because he was getting ready to go on a journey uh, that he'd never experienced before, that no one had ever anticipated him to experience. He had no reserve, but there was going to be no return. Boy, he's sitting in that pit, and he has no idea what's coming next. He came unto his own, but secondly, his own received him not. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. You think about this, if there's anybody that you think would have your back, if there's anybody that you think that you're going to be good with no matter what, it's your family. Now, I know we have issues, I know we have fights, I know we have different things that pop up, but at the end of the day, boy, there's three people that I know that I can call my three brothers. Man, there's four people that I know that I can call my mom and my three brothers. There's always my family that I can go to. There's always my family that I can turn to. I've always got that comfort that there's four people out there that I can call, who I can talk to, who will understand. The Bible is very clear that Joseph comes unto his own and before he even gets there, they're talking about taking his life. His own received him not. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? He came unto his own, and his own received him not. As we go through the life of Joseph, there's going to be so many similarities. You think about the fact that Joseph was sold for silver. Jesus was sold for silver. Jesus came unto his own, and his own received him not. There's a lot of similarities as you look at Joseph and you look at Jesus, and uh, we can tie those things together. You say this, but well, Joseph was only sold for 20 pieces of silver, but Jesus was sold for 30. That's just inflation. That's all that is. That's a long period of time right there, right? His own received him not. That was a difficult thing, I'm sure. That's a hard thing to swallow that your own family's ready to kill you. Your own family's ready to take your life. Starts to wonder, boy, was there anything to those dreams? There's been men throughout the Bible who think about David. He was anointed to be king over Israel, but then for year upon year, he was just hiding in caves and was scared for his life. Well, what, what was that that day when that man came and he anointed me to be the next king and now Saul, who is king, is desperately trying to take my life? Think about Moses, the deliverer of Israel at the age of 40, but by the time he was 80, he was on the backside of the desert.
The third thing I'll give you. He came unto his own. His own received him not. But God's plan moves forward. God's plan moves forward. If you will, look with me at Genesis chapter number 37. The last verse of this chapter. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and a captain of the guard. So these Midianites, they, Joseph's brothers sold him to the Midianites. Now the Midianites have sold him to Potiphar. He's been sold twice. He's, he's so far from home now. He's far from everything uh, that he once knew. And God's plan is just getting started. Everything's on track. Now, if you're Joseph and you're going through this, you're thinking, I'm going to get rescued. You're thinking, something's going to take place. My dad's going to hear about what happened. One of my brothers, maybe Reuben, the one that was going to spare my life, he's going to go to my dad and tell him what happened, and dad's going to use his resources, and he's going to come find me, and then the dreams are going to come into fruition. Something's got to take place in order for this to uh, make sense. We like things that make sense. We like things that we can figure out. We like to have the whole plan put together before we sign on the line. We want to know every detail. We want to know everything that, that there is possible. Every question I need to have it answered before I, before I make a decision. Before I say, here am I. I want to know every detail of what I'm expected to do, how I'm supposed to do it, and that's what I want before I say any before I before I say no reserves. Before I say no reserves or I'm okay with no return, I want to know everything that's going to happen. Joseph had no idea what was going on. But he knew that there was a God in heaven who loved him and had a perfect plan. And he knows this, he's not dead. He's not dead. Boy, the plan was, let's kill him. Let's kill him and see what becomes of his dreams. But all of a sudden, in the same chapter, we find him just a few days later, he's alive. And those dreams are still a possibility. Can I remind you of this this morning? That his ways are not like our ways. And his thoughts are not like our thoughts. Man, aren't you glad sometime that, that you're not God? Man, our thoughts, they're just they, 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 they're like a roller coaster. God's ways are not like ours. His ways are so much higher than ours. His ways are so much better than ours. He's got a design and a perfect plan. His ways are not like our ways. You know, we like to question, we like to try to figure it all out, and we just say, I just don't understand why I have to go through this. I don't understand what God's trying to do. I don't understand the circumstances that I've been put in. There's nobody who could say that like Joseph. This just doesn't make sense. I just had these dreams. Dad sends me. The brothers try to kill me. Reuben spares my life. They sell me to the Midianites. And all of a sudden, I'm in Egypt. And I'm working for Potiphar. You know who the first tennis player in the Bible was? It was Joseph. He served in Pharaoh's court. He served in Pharaoh's court. I always remember. His ways are not like our ways. And I don't know what you're going through, but by the hands, the unspoken, your families, the different things that go on, there's difficult things that take place in this life. The Bible says this life is short but full of trouble. His ways are not like our ways, and he still has a plan. Three things. Number one, he has a plan. He has a plan. We have to, like Joseph, have no reserves. Here am I. I understand I won't get all the details. I understand that I'm not going to get, get to know everything. Because his plan is often not published. His plan's not published. We don't get to see the whole thing before it happens. If Joseph, if any of us would sign up to be Joseph if we saw what was going to happen. But it wasn't published. It wasn't put out there for everybody to see. 
man, if I knew that I was going to be the second most powerful man in Egypt, if all I had to do was just go along with the ride, boy, you just go through with it. Yep, I know what's going to happen in the end, so I'm just going to do what I've got to do to get to the end. That's not what Joseph did. Joseph, day by day, said, here am I. No matter where he was, the Bible says the Lord was with him. In order for the Lord to be with you, what has to take place? You have to have a right relationship with the Lord. You've got to make sure that you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do and that you're keeping him first in your life. He has a plan for each and every person. He has a plan for you as you sit here this morning, but his plan is not published. And our circumstances get difficult, and our circumstances get hard. But he has a plan. So what's our responsibility? Just keep doing right. Keep serving Him. Keep Him first every day. Love Him. Spend time with Him. Because His plan is perfect. His plan is perfect. You can't be perfect. You can't be perfect. Man, you know, we try, to, we try to figure it out ourselves and we try to get everything done ourselves and we think that we can do it in our own power. But the Bible says this, it says, without me, you can do nothing. Your plan is going to just end up causing more trouble, more issues, more circumstances. Notice that none of these circumstances were by something that Joseph did. These were not consequences for something that he had done. The father had favoritism. Joseph did not do that. Joseph just did what he knew he was supposed to do. These were not consequences because of something that he had done, but these were circumstances that God was setting up on a perfect plan to bring him to where he wanted to use him. To bring him to the point where he would help save not only his family, but the entire world. We think about Joseph, we think about his life, we think about our life, we think about the difficult things that we've gone through. Those are there in our life because God is, is working on a perfect plan for each of us. Well, we've got to make sure that we do what we're supposed to do. That we're in his word, that we're, we're in communication with him, that we're in his house, that we're growing closer to him. But as the difficult times come and our circumstances will change, we have no idea what will happen this week. We have no idea what will happen with our health. We have no idea what will happen with our family. We have no idea what's going to take place. But we need to do what Joseph did. I know there's a God in heaven who loves me, who cares about me, who created me, who has a perfect plan specific for me. As specific as your DNA, God has a plan for you. Your job, just trust Him. Hardest verses in the Bible, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own plan, on your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct thy path. Boy, if you want to have a successful life, you want to have uh, peace, you want to enjoy what God has for you, get to the point where you say, it's not my plan. Boy, my plan is going to be anything but perfect. My plan is going to be anything but what I want. I've got to trust the one who created me. I've got to trust the one who's designed something specifically for me. And though I don't get to know what it is because it won't be published, I'm going to do everything I can to just stay right with him. And say, here am I. I've got no reserves. If you ask me to do it, I'll do it. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for each one that's here. Lord, as we think about our life, it's easy for us to try to take control. It's easy for us to try to figure it out. It's easy for us to try to plan. Father, help us this week to once again say, Lord, I'm tired of trying myself. I'm tired of trying to figure it out and to plan it up. Here am I. Whatever you have for me. I don't know what the end is, but each day I'll get up with a desire to please you, with a desire to serve you, with a desire to do the best that I can 
in the circumstances that you have me in. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. We're out just a couple minutes early. Anybody else? I'm thankful for God's word. That's a good one. Nobody said that earlier. Anything else? Yes. My husband. I'm thankful that. Amen. Amen. Well, this week, enjoy yourselves and um, enjoy the time off if you normally work. If you have to work, enjoy it anyway. There's a plan. God bless you. Have a great week. Hey, brother. How are you doing? Good. Feeling all right? Good. Good.